searching for a brighter day. Where do they go? Tell me, what do they say? to you people of God and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. I'm your host, Pastor Sidero Drayton, the overseer. I am so delighted and appreciative that you chose to tune in tonight. I'm telling you, if you made a cognizant decision to tune in tonight, I'm telling you, you decided to tune in to the right night for the right study. I'm telling you, what what, what God has to uh, share with us tonight is so practical but yet it's so potent, it's so powerful. So I welcome you again to uh, Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. We are here to empower you. I'm here to submit to the Holy Spirit and share with you things that will empower you to be all, do all, and have all that God has purposed for your life here on earth concerning his kingdom agenda. Amen. So I welcome you again to our Kingdom Worship Center, and I appreciate you for tuning in, taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, tune in and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So do me this favor as I ask you always to share this link with somebody, a friend, a loved one, somebody that you know is serious about getting their life on the right track for the kingdom of God and being right relationship with God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the precious Holy Spirit. Just take a moment and share this link. If you're watching from my personal uh, Facebook page or the KWCI 8 uh, church page or YouTube page, share the link right now and tell somebody it's time for Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. We're gonna delve into something that's serious, that's practical, but it's necessary to uh, discuss tonight. And we're gonna be talking about minimizing remedial courses in your life. So the subject alone should uh, invoke you to share it with somebody because this is a very serious subject, you know, based on the times that we're living in, it's a lot that's going on and we don't want to waste time. We want to redeem time, amen. So. We have to be time conscious because time consists of life. Amen. So do me that favor and prepare yourself to receive from God tonight. And we'll go into prayer in just a moment and uh, hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. While you're sharing the link, uh, just begin to prepare your spirit and just tell God, thank you. Let him know you appreciate him. All he's done. All that he's going to do, all that he did today, the word says that we've received new mercies this morning. His grace has been sufficient for each one of us today. He's loaded us with benefits, daily benefits have he loaded us with. So even if you didn't feel like you were blessed, you were still blessed because you're still breathing. Praise God. So just take a moment and tell him thank you. Give him a hallelujah. Give, give him an appreciation. Worship him for who he is and what he's done in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Your name is above every name. Ooh, hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for you, Jeremiah said. And I'm saying the same thing tonight. Father, you're all of that and a bag of chips, God. We can't articulate how awesome you are. Glory to God. We're going to go into prayer right now, then go into the study of the word. Father, I thank you tonight. I bless you tonight. I give you praise. You are worthy to be honored. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified. And so, Father God, I realize right now, before we move any further, that I have nothing to say unless you speak through my vocal apparatus. I have nothing to think unless you think through my mind. And so, Father God, I'm asking you right now, I yield my members to you right now, Father God. And I'm asking you to use me as a vessel of honor, fit 
for the master's use. And so I thank you right now and prepare the hearts of your people, Father God, to receive the word of the Lord, to receive the awesome revelation from the word of God. I pray, Father, that revelation knowledge would flow freely tonight. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would lead us, that you would guide us by your spirit, that you will answer questions tonight, my Father. And I thank you right now. I praise your own credit for how you're going to move, how you're going to speak, how you're going to edify your people tonight. And I praise your own credit tonight in advance for what you're going to do because it's already done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and bless God. Praise God. Thank you for those who just tuned in tonight to a Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. You're going to be empowered by the word of the living God tonight. So we're going to get straight into the teaching for tonight. I don't want to uh, be long, but I want to be strong in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at uh, the text. Look at the title. Pardon me. Minimizing remedial courses in your life. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight minimizing remedial courses in your life. Now, I don't know exactly why the Holy Spirit gave me this to teach, but I do know that anything he gives me to teach is necessary to be taught. Praise God. So look at this thing here. And we're going to get started. Minimizing remedial, oh my God, courses in your life my god just the title alone should make you uh, begin to ponder some things in your life what am i still learning over and over again that i should have graduated from what, what what scenarios should i have already graduated from that i find myself in the same exact scenario five years later ten years later it, 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 uh, i'm getting older but am i getting wiser Oh, glory to God. We, we're going to delve into some things tonight. Glory to God. I feel it's anointing. Now, let's look at this. Minimizing remedial courses in your life. Let's look at something that I believe is uh, so powerful. Hebrews chapter 5, just to start off. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Look at what they say for it. When for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Everybody say again who's watching. One teach you again. So that means that it was already taught previously, right? Which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, I don't want to totally deal with the actual context of this because we can get off into some derivatives, but I just wanted to pull out the principle in the first verse, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. In other words, you find yourself in a remedial course. You've already been taught this, but since you haven't utilized what you've been taught, you have to be refreshed on it again. Now watch this. So. You should have, by this time, been able to capitalize off of the teaching that you've been exposed to. But because we haven't utilized the teaching, we have need of being refreshed in the teaching. Oh my God, this is, this is good already. So, so, so let's look at this thing. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age full age symbolizes maturity right so strong meat is for mature believers and so i want to deal with the principle of this tonight 
and we're going to uh, delve into some things and uh, just go to the floor of the Holy Spirit tonight. I want to begin with a favorite quote of mine. You, you, if you've uh, tuned in for any of the broadcasts, you know I often make this quote on different occasions. And uh, it's one of my favorites that the Lord gave me personally uh, some years ago. And I, I still use it because it, it is still uh, apropos. It's still uh, significant to me in my life because I'm a man who is constantly learning. I am one who remains in a posture of humility because if God can keep you humble, he can keep you blessed. For the word says that he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So if you want to continue to have God's grace released in your life, learn to be humble. Learn to walk in his humility. Are you listening to me? So one of my favorite quotes that he gave me some years ago is life consists of time and time is a part of life. Therefore, when you are wasting time, you're wasting life. Let me break that down. Life consists of time. And time is a part of life. Now, look at it practically. I've just spent 30 seconds doing this quote. I can't go back and get those 30 seconds. But I use those 30 seconds to say something life changing. Are you listening to me? So the 30 seconds of what I said was not in vain because it's empowering somebody. Everybody see that? But I can't officially go back and get the 30 seconds that I spent making this quote. Everybody see that? So life consists of time and time is a part of life. So therefore, when you're wasting time, you're wasting life. Now, what do, what do I mean by wasting time? Time that could have been used for something worthy of your time. Oh my, <laughs> let me say that again. Wasting time is using time for something that doesn't deserve the time that you give it. So when you're wasting time, you're wasting a part of your life that you can't get back. That's why it's so important to utilize our time wisely because we're utilizing our life. But you can't separate life and time. Everybody see the principle there. So another quote that I uh, love, this was in 1998. I will never forget this. I was in Jacksonville, Florida. I was uh, working at a summer camp and uh, I had to uh, go for training for CPR. When you're working with kids, you have to know CPR and stuff like that. And so uh, we went on a field trip and once we got to the resort and I walked in the little cabin and, and the first quote I saw on the board was this. If you always do what you've always done, then you will always get what you've always got. And you will always be what you always were. Let me say that again. If you always do what you've always done, then you will always get what you always got and you will always be what you always were my god that, that, that's heavy to me so in other words if you don't do anything different then you won't get a different result we have a modern day uh, definition of insanity which is doing the same thing repeatedly yet expecting a different result are you listening to me so so here's the thing we have to understand you have to do if, if, if currently in your current situation, you don't like the results that you've gotten, this signifies that you have to do something different so you can get a different result. You can't do the same thing and get a different result. You have to do something different in order to get a different result. If you don't like, if you believe that the enemy is having more of a field day in your life than God is having a field day in your life, then now you got to turn to the things that God requires instead of what the enemy has called you to spend time doing. Are you listening to me? So, so, so look at this thing. Let's move on. Though God is a redeemer of time. You know, we love to quote that. And, and I've loved to quote it myself. You know, I, I've enjoyed quoting it over the years. You know, God, uh, he's 
one who restores the years that the canker worm, the locust, and the pummel worm have eaten up. You listen to me. You probably said it yourself. I've quoted it many times. You know, God is able to restore the years that the canker worm, the locust, and the pummel granite, pummel worm have eaten up. Pardon me. And 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 so though God is a redeemer of time, watch this now. Let me give you balance. We as humans can't go back and appropriately use the time that we wasted taking remedial courses in life. Yeah, now God can do it. Now God can go back and he can do some wonderful, extraordinary, unfathomable things in your now and make it appear as if you didn't waste any time. But that's God. <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> God can do it, but you can't do it. You can't go back. If you flunked uh, fifth grade two times, you can't go back to the fifth grade and pass it. Because you're grown now. You understand what I'm saying? So there are certain things that we you can't go back and be a child in your mother's arms. That time is already over. It, it, it's expired. You're a grown man. You're a grown woman now. You see what I'm saying? So there's some things you can't go back into time and redo. Now, God can go back into your past, heal your past in your now, and have a totally different future for you. But that's God. <laughs> that's not you. That's not me. Are you listening to me? So, so though God is a redeemer of time, we as humans cannot go back and appropriately use the time that we wasted taking remedial courses in life. Now, let me help you understand once again, going back to this favorite quote, you can't separate time from life. They're cohesive. They go hand in hand. So when you're shooting the breeze, you're wasting your life. So when you're shooting the breeze doing nothing, you're wasting life. Now, there's a time, let me give you balance, there's a time that you need to rest. You ought to do something, or some of you are too busy right now. You're doing a whole lot of stuff. You're busy, but you're not moving forward. This is the difference between being busy and moving forward. You know, watch this. You can be on a treadmill running in place, but you're not going anywhere. You might, uh, you know, running in, you're running in place, you know, you might be uh, tracking miles on the treadmill, but you really just moving in the same spot in reality. Are you listening to me? So the energy that you're exerting is the equivalent of you may run one or two miles on the treadmill, but you're just running in the same spot. And so many people are, because they are exerting energy, think they're actually moving forward, but you're just running in place. Everybody see that. So, so when you're running in place, you're exerting energy, but you're really wasting time <laughs> if you're not moving forward. Are you listening to this? So look at the principle there. So, so God is a redeemer of the time. He's the one who can do that. So the time you think you lost, he can supernaturally redeem the time. And it's as if you didn't lose the time that you actually lost, but that's God. He's in a class all by himself. So everybody understand that. So, so time, watch this now, time spent is life spent. Let me say that again. Time spent. I, I need you to get this because this, this is uh, coinciding with the, uh, the title of the lesson tonight is minimizing remedial courses in your life, right? So time spent is life spent. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Time spent is life spent. Now watch this. Life spent cannot be unspent. <laughs> Life spent cannot be unspent. Now look at Psalm 90, verse 12. The reason I didn't know totally why the Holy Spirit led me to do this, because last week, you know, I was talking about, Lord, open our eyes. And, you know, we were talking about some wonderful things in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 with Elisha. And, 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 and you know, he prayed that the servant's eyes would be open, that he would see, 
that there was more for us than against us, you know. And 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 so I didn't know totally why the Holy Spirit shifted me to teach on something that seemingly or outwardly has nothing to do with what we talked last week, but I understand it better now. The Holy Spirit wants me to teach this tonight because at the rate we are going, we have to use every second of every minute and make it count. There's so much going on in society. We can't take nothing for granted. We have to be about our father's business like never before. See, the world, watch this now, the world doesn't have the answers. Let me say it one more time. The world does not have the answers. God is the only one who has the answers and those connected to him have accessibility to the answers that he has. Are you listening to me? So the world doesn't know what's going on. The world doesn't know we're in the end times. The world doesn't understand why all hell is breaking loose. The world doesn't understand the behind the scenes one world government that the powers that be are trying to implement. See, the world doesn't understand all. They just know all hell is breaking loose but they don't know why it's breaking loose. And so we have to redeem the time, allow God to redeem the time, but we have to also in our now and in our future, spend our time wisely. And the best way to spend our time is to spend our time doing the will of God. Are you listening to me? So, so time spent is life spent and life spent cannot be unspent. So Psalm 90, verse 12, look at what it says. Now, I want you to read this slowly with me. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to tonight? This is powerful to me. Watch this now. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Oh my God, this is good right now. Look at this verse. Teach us to number our days. In other words, you have to be taught how to maximize your days on this earth. Now is not a time to just be shooting the breeze and just doing anything, just wasting time because you're wasting life. So, so the psalmist says, teach us, God, to number our days, to maximize our days, to be wise in the days that you've given us on earth, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What is wisdom? It's not just the accumulation of knowledge, but wisdom is the application of God's knowledge. The application, not just the accumulation of knowledge, but the application of God's knowledge. Are you listening to me? So, so the psalmist says, teach us. We have to be taught how to maximize our days. We have to be taught how to use wisdom in each second of every day, of every minute of every hour of the day. Everybody see that? We have, see, in, in, in our day, we have choices within the day. Are you listening to me? So each time we make a decision, we are deciding to do something as opposed to do something else, doing something else. Are you listening to me? So we have to be taught to make each day count and to make the wise decisions within the days because our, all we have is X amount of days. And only God knows the number that's in the X. Everybody understand that? See, we have a birth date and a death date, and there's a dash in between that date. So God knows the number of days that's in our dash. So we have to be taught how to appropriately and sufficiently utilize and maximize each one of our days to make it count. Amen. Everybody with me so far?
So let's move on now. Opening statement, when I just say opening, you know, but, but uh, I've already said something, but let's go into uh, what, what I'm talking about tonight. It's a hard, I said this in my introduction, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow to realize that life doesn't stop while we are learning remedial life lessons. Oh my God, that, that, I'm telling you, that's, <laughs> that's profound. I, I'm speaking from experience and I'm speaking from wisdom. See, there are lessons learned and then there are learned lessons. Let me say that again. There are lessons learned and there are learned lessons. Are you listening to me? So it's a hard pill to swallow to realize that life does not stop while we are learning remedial life lessons. And I want you to, as I'm teaching, I want you to think about your life. Think about the time that you may have wasted since this new year has come about. Time that you may have wasted in years past taking remedial life lessons. And so I want you to participate and not only listen, but participate. Are you listening to me? So, so, so it's really a hard pill to swallow. It's a big pill to swallow. And it, it, it's not a good pill to swallow, but it's a necessary pill to swallow. So life does not stop while we are learning remedial life lessons. So in other words, time is still ticking. So that means your life is still ticking. Everybody see that? So time is still ticking. Watch this now. I thought this was profound. And we are getting older and closer to our death date and further away from our birth date. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, that's profound to me. I, <laughs> that was profound to me. So let me say that again. Time is still ticking. While we are learning remedial life lessons, time is still ticking. We're getting older and closer to our death date. That's not being pessimistic, that's the truth. And further away from our birth date. Oh my God. So time used, watch this now, to repeat remedial lessons could be used to increase learning. Let me say that again, time used to repeat remedial lessons could be used to increase learning and focus on something that you don't know that you need to learn. Everybody see that? So watch this now. God is a progressive revelator, not a social promoter. God is a progressive revelator, not a social promoter. Everybody see that? So understand, God wants to lay a foundation of truth. Then he wants to build on that foundation of truth. And as you exercise yourself on each individual level, then he graduates you to the next level, then the next level, then the next level, then the next dimension, then the next levels. If you look at the uh, numerical system, you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then you have double digits, then 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 19, 20, and then you have 21, 22, you know, so it's just, there are levels, there are steps, and then there are dimensions. You have decades, so 10 decades is one century, right? So, so you know, there are levels within each dimension. Are you listening to me? So God will not, even though he wants you to be all, do all, and have all that he purposed, he doesn't allow you to skip steps because each step is necessary. You know, and some people are, you know, some students now, they, they you know, I saw one 14-year-old, she, she's the first 14-year-old to be uh, accepted into Spelman College, you know, and that's wonderful and stuff, you know. So some people are, they're, they're, they're uh, what you call it, uh, IQ is much higher and stuff, but, but God still wants you to learn specific things on each level. Otherwise, you're cheating yourself by just going from, uh, you know, elementary school to high school. I don't care how smart you are. You, you, your mind might be smart enough, but you haven't developed enough to skip middle school and go straight to high school. Everybody see that. There's some things that you, you have to uh, learn on each level in order to be fully mature. 
Everybody see that. So God does not, though, though he wants you to experience everything that he purposed, he's a progressive revelator. He doesn't socially promote you just so you can keep up with the other kids. So I'm going to let you skip this step. God, God's not like that. <laughs> he wants us to learn the lessons that he's ordained on each step because each step is a stepping stone. Everybody see that? So each lesson that he teaches us is a stepping stone to greater insight and perfection. Everybody see that? So, so therefore, no lesson can be skipped, only learn. I love that song uh, Fantasia has out, uh, it was necessary. So that's some things that are just necessary. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You can't go over it. You got to go through it. Everybody see that? So uh, let me give you some scriptures on increasing learning. Let's look at our Psalm 147, verse 5. Now, there are many different applications to this, so I just want to deal with the basic uh, foundational principle of increasing your learning. Amen. Psalm 147, look at uh, verse 5. Psalm 147, verse 5. Look at what it says now. Great is our Lord and of great power, his understanding is infinite. Great is our Lord and of great power, his understanding is infinite. So that's the foundation. God's understanding is infinite. Man is finite. That means we as humans are limited. God is unlimited. His understanding is unlimited, has no bounds or is boundless. So there's never a time when you go to God, go boldly before God's throne of grace and ask him a question and he will say, come back later. I don't have the answer. God, his understanding, not only does he have knowledge, but he understands what he knows. Everybody see that? See, some people have knowledge, but they don't understand what they know. God has the knowledge. He has the wisdom, and he understands both. Everybody see that? Now, let's look at a Proverbs chapter. Up. So now we need to understand that we need to go to the one who understands everything. Everything that we experience on earth is a prototype of what's going on in heaven. It's like we have governments in the natural realm. God has a government in heaven. Everybody see that? Just like we have kingdoms on earth, God has a kingdom. And he's the king. Are you listening to me? So, so look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. Now, here's a very important scripture to get. A wise man, not any man, a wise man, not a foolish man, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Let me stop right there. I'm scared of people who don't want to hear nothing other than what they've been taught. It says a wise man will hear. That means that if you don't listen to anything else, you'll never increase in learning. Because the next step is a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Here is the connotation that you are open to something that you don't already know. Some people don't want to learn nothing else. What they already know is minimal, but they still don't want to learn nothing else. They don't want to hear nothing else. They just want, you know, just leave well enough. No, 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 no. God is a God of excellence. Amen. God is a God of understanding. And if we are his sons and daughters, we should want the understanding that he has. Everybody see that? So, so a wise man will in, he, hear, first of all, I'm open to hear something other than what I already know. So in other words, in other words, a wise man or a wise woman is teachable. 
oh my God. How many people you know that you can't tell them nothing? Now they don't know much, but you still can't tell them nothing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That, 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 that's a terrible combination. You don't know much and you still don't want to hear nothing else. So a wise man or a wise woman will increase, they will hear, first of all, they're an imposter to hear. I'm open to learn something that I don't know. So a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. See, just because you don't know something, that doesn't mean you're stupid. That just means you have a lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge can be cured by exposing you to the knowledge that you don't know. Everybody see that difference between uh, ignorance and stupidity. Ignorance simply means a lack of knowledge. Stupidity means that you knew what to do, but you did what you wanted to do. <laughs> I'm on somebody, but that, that, that's a whole different category. But, but, but watch this, a wise man will hear meaning I'm open to learn, I'm not closed ears. Also a wise man is not one who has itching ears, just wanna hear what he wants to hear, but a wise man will hear, I want to know something I don't know, I'm open to learn. Everybody see that? And will increase learning, so when you're open to learn, you can increase learning, everybody see that? And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. What does that mean? See, a man who's a wise man won't make assumptions. You say, look, if I don't know something, if I get on a new level, I don't know anything on this new level. So now I'm going to seek out wise counsel. I'm seeking out people who have the wisdom that I'm trying to get. Are you listening to me? So some people, that's why the, the word says that a fool despises wisdom. Oh my God. You know, da, 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 despise is a strong word. <laughs> a fool despises wisdom. My God. But a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. You know, I'm looking for wisdom. I'm looking for somebody who don't know, somebody who knows what I don't know. I need somebody. I'm pulling on others who, who've already been where I'm trying to go and get that wisdom, glean from, glean God's wisdom from them so I can be wise on the level that they're already on just like they're using wisdom. Are you listening to me? So a wise man will attain unto wise counsel, not stupid counsel, but wise counsel. Are you listening to me? Now, let's move on to uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 33. Look at what it says. This is so important to get this in your spirit. Jeremiah 33. Look at what it says. Verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Watch this. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So this is something you have to do. If you don't know something, you have to call on the one who knows it. His understanding is infinite, right? So call unto him. And the beautiful thing, he says, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There's some great and mighty things that we don't know even exist. There's some great and mighty things. You know, it talks about the Lord of hosts, the organizer of the army of God. So God has an army. 
So, you know, we scared of demons down here and principalities and powers, but God has a host that is much more powerful than the demons and the principalities and powers that are involved in our lives and territories around the earth. That's why you go in certain sections of town, you know, you may see poverty in this area. You may see drug infestation and, 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 and illicit sexual activity and prostitution in this area. That's because there are principalities over those areas that are influencing the minds of those people to do those particular things. Are you listening to me? So, you know, so if you imagine their principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, according to Ephesians chapter six, but yet God has a greater host in heaven. He got Warren spirits. He got cherubs. He got uh, seraphims. He got all kind of uh, 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 army that whips up on the demons. Are you listening to me? But we have to understand God has great and mighty things, but most believers don't know anything about this. So we have to be open to learn what we don't know. So we can start using what God has accessibility for us to utilize. Are you listening to me? So you don't know these things exist unless you go to the one who knows they exist. Are you listening to me? So look at this thing, Je Jeremiah, he says, call unto me. See, sometimes we as saints, we're following God, but we don't know what God is packing with. Let me help somebody understand. After Jesus, uh, the disciples in Mark chapter four, they, they woke Jesus up, they woke the word up and the word rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And then they said, what manner of man is this? So you can be following God and don't know God is packing with some things. You can be going without and don't realize God has what you're going without. So we have to understand getting to know God is a never ending experience. Come on, somebody. You can never exhaust all of God's knowledge, all of God's understanding. So Paul said in the ages to come, we're going to be learning some things about the length, the breadth, the depth and the height of the love of God. Are you listening to me? So, so, so he says, call unto me. Hey. I'm gracious enough, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't even know exist, that you don't even know about. Everybody see that. And now we're living in a time prophetically where we need to know about the things that God knows about. See, because our natural weaponry is not going to help us. We need God super added to our natural. I'm telling you what I know. We have to tap into the great and mighty things that God knows about because what we're currently working with is not doing the job down here on earth. Are you listening to me? So, so call unto me. So we have to call unto God and he will answer us. Then he'll show us the great and the mighty things that we need to know in this hour. Are you listening to me? So look at uh, Psalm 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse 8. Watch this now. This is a very important to understand. Look at what God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. I will instruct thee. How many of you know we need instructions? We need to be taught. We don't need to be hollered at. We don't need to be preached at all the time. We need to be taught sometime. I will teach you the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eyes. So this deals with information, this deals with demonstration, and this deals with guidance. That's the threefold part of learning, three components of learning, instruction, teaching, and guiding. Everybody see that? So God says, I will instruct thee. I will teach you in the way you should go, and I will guide thee. So that's an act of God's will. So he says, I will do those things for you. If you call unto me, I will answer you. Are you listening to me? So if we call unto God, God is willing to instruct us. He's willing to teach us, and he's willing to guide us. 
hey, how, how are we going to lose if we just humble ourselves under God's mighty hand so he can exalt us in due time? Are you listening to me? Now look at Hebrews chapter uh, 5. It won't be too long tonight. Hebrews chapter 5, verses uh, 12 through 14. We open with this and uh, we'll close with this tonight. But we'll close with uh, Psalm 115, but uh, let's go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 5. And let's look at the principle of this thing, verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Take a remedial course. That's what we're talking about. Minimizing remedial courses in life. See, because when you're wasting time, you're wasting life. You can't separate time from life. So we don't want to keep having to learn the same lessons over and over when there's some things that we can be learning that we've never learned before instead of reviewing what we already been taught. Are you listening to me? Watch this now. And you can apply that in all areas of your life. Now, look at, uh, it says, you have need that one teach you again. Now, hold on. So that means that the remedial courses are necessary because we haven't learned the lessons yet to get promoted to the next level. So that's a serious word right there. You have need that one teach you again. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't learn it the first time. We, we didn't learn it the first time, so we have to retake it in order to learn it. Are you listening to me? So a wise man will increase learning. Are you listening to me? So now it says, uh, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So, you know, you have a lot of people still dealing with the basic rudimentary principles of the word of God. And then and, and God's like, man, we've been learning, we've been teaching this stuff. You've been hearing the same stuff for years. Now it's time to graduate and go into some deeper things because the devil has gone deeper in his demonic reality. Have you noticed, let me say this to you. Have you noticed how cocky the devil has gotten in the last 10, 15 years. He doesn't respect the church. It's like the church is a joke now. You understand? People don't respect the church. People don't, re when you say Jesus, it's like it's a joke. You understand what I'm saying? That talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, he ain't real, you know? And then, and then, so the devil is getting more and more cocky now because he knows God is getting ready to show out like he's never shown out before. So. Anytime you see that, whatever you see the enemy doing, he's imitating God in an opposite way. So if the enemy is getting more cocky in showing his wickedness, that's because God's glory is getting ready to cover the earth. Are you listening to me? So, so, so the enemy is getting more and more cocky. He's getting more and more blatant because he thinks he's all of that in a bag of chips. So I don't have to be discreet no more. I don't have to be subtle no more. I'm going to be cocky. I want you to know it's me, but you can't do nothing about it. Come on, somebody. Now watch this. 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. So that's how you know where you are. If you're not using the word that you've been exposed to, it's still as if you obeyed. So if you're not using what you've been exposed to, you're not growing. Everybody see that? You may be getting older, but you're not growing spiritually. Everybody see that? So, so it says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, meaning mature, even those who by reason of use. See, you got to use what you're exposed to. You have to use the knowledge of God that you're exposed to in order to get better at it. See, I can look at, uh, like I said, I'm a musician. I can look at... Uh, scales all day long but if i don't practice my scales my finger dexterity won't get better are you listening to me because you have to use the knowledge of god in order to get better at the knowledge of god in other words you have to use the word in order to become the word everybody see that by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so the principle i want to 
really harp on is the fact that at a time you ought to be teachers, you have need of remedial courses. So we want to minimize uh, remedial courses because remedial courses take up time, which takes up our life that we could be using to learn something that we don't know about God, that we can learn something that uh, some mighty and great things that God wants to show us. But if he got to keep taking us through remedial courses, he can't use that time to teach us what we don't know. Everybody see that? Now, the Hebrew writer compares where they were as opposed to where they should have been. So that means that we, we can be further along than we actually are. But it boils down to choices that we made. Everybody see that? And lessons that we have not learned. Everybody see that? So then it shifts to having to take remedial courses instead of using teaching modules. <laughs> That's good. I, I, I thought that was what I had to laugh about that myself. <laughs> so, 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 so the Hebrew writer shifts to having to take remedial courses, it being necessary to take remedial courses instead of using teaching modules. <laughs> So in other words, here's the thing. Many have been exposed to enough of the word of God to be teaching the word of God by now. But they're still taking remedial courses, still going through the same stuff in your life, same stuff in your relationship with your children, the same stuff, you know, the same scenarios in your marriage, you know, same, you know, one relationship after another, you know, same thing. You haven't learned lessons yet, so you keep taking taking these remedial courses. Everybody see that? So, but God wants us to graduate. So He says evidence was obviously given to substantiate a need for remedial courses. So He gave the analogy that uh, if you haven't been skillful, if you haven't been using the word that you've been exposed to, then you still a babe. So you haven't grown, even though you may have been exposed to more mature subject matter. But since you haven't been using the subject matter, you haven't been growing. Everybody see that? And he says strong meat is for those who have exercised their senses. So you've been exposed to the deeper things of God and you've exercised your knowledge in those deeper areas. So now you become mature. Everybody see that? So now you 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 graduated to strong meat because you mastered the milk. Everybody see that? Now let's move on here in closing. Hear me good, and I'm not going to hold you long tonight. Minimizing remedial courses in your life, watch this now, will free up your time, which we need, to focus on strong meat, and that will produce greater increase. Telling you, we're in a time now, people of God, where we must increase because the enemy is laughing at us. People don't respect God. People don't respect the house of God. People don't respect the church. People don't respect the kingdom of God. But it's time for a shift to take place in society. Amen. So let's close with uh, Psalm 115. I want to look at verses uh, 11 through 15. Psalm 115, this is powerful to me. Verse 11 says, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. We're not talking about being scared of God, but having a reverential honor of him, reverential fear of him. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Verse 12, the Lord hath been mindful of us. There it is. Somebody thought the Lord forgot. Lord, somebody forgot that, 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 that say, oh, God is not looking. He, he doesn't see what I'm going through. He doesn't see what I'm dealing with. The devil is a liar. He has been mindful of you. Watch this now. Not only has he been mindful of us, he will bless us. So God's mindful of us and he has blessing us on his mind. Are you listening to me? Watch this now. 
He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. 13, he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. I love it. See, God just doesn't have an anointing for adults. He has an anointing for children too. Come on, somebody. Small and great. If you fear the Lord, God knows how to, 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 to deal with you on that relationship level. Everybody see that? So he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Doesn't matter what your status is. You may not have no title, but he'll still bless you if you fear him. Everybody see that? Look at verse 14. The Lord shall, I love this verse. The Lord shall increase you more and more you and your children. See, God doesn't want to bless you one time. He wants to continually bless you. He wants to continually increase you because he's a progressive revelator. He's not a social promoter. He's a progressive revelator. So he wants to continue increasing you in every area of your life. Just like you a baby, you suck, you know, you know, you suck in your mother's breast. Then after a while, you start eating little, uh, you know, start feet. Mama starts feeding you, uh, you know, little food in the little, you know, applesauce in a little can, you know, and then, and then after that, you start, start giving you a little piece of chicken, you know, from one of the drumsticks or something. Then, then, then you eventually start eating table food. And then once you begin to get nutrients, you start growing, then you begin to eat the adult food. Are you listening to me? So understand God wants to increase you just like the incremental incremental stages of development in the natural, the incremental stages of development in the spiritual realm. Everybody see that? It's like you naturally age, you can age and become more mature in the spirit realm. Everybody see that? So he says the Lord shall increase you. So that means that it's a guarantee. He shall increase you more and more. Not only does he have increase concerning you, but he has his mind on your children too. So he wants the whole family increased. Are you listening to me? Now look at what it says. Uh, ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So when you minimize remedial courses in your life, you can move on. You can graduate to higher heights and deeper depths in God and in your relationship with him. And so that frees up your time to focus on strong meat, which will produce the increase in your life. Everybody see that God can't take you deeper if you're still dealing with remedial courses. You still, you know, stuff you should have learned 15 years ago. You got a remedial, you sitting up in a remedial course somewhere in the spirit realm. Hey, listen to me. I'm, I, and I'm guilty of this myself. So, so, it's time for us to, to, to grab this thing, this bull by the horns, you know, and, 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 and start realizing that the clock of time is ticking. And that there's life that we can't go and get back. So we have to, like Psalm 90 verse 12 says, number our days. Lord, teach us to number our days so that we can apply, apply our hearts to wisdom. So my time is up tonight. I'm, I'm not going to uh, belabor the point, but I just wanted to share that information with you. The Lord dropped that in my spirit to uh, share with the people of God. Minimize remedial courses in your life. You got to repeat lesson you're learning. Pass the test this time. Make sure you study properly. Do an assessment. It's okay to look back in your past, not to condemn yourself, but to uh, learn lessons from your past so history won't repeat itself in your now. And if you don't deal with it in your now, history will repeat itself in your future. So instead of you being in the future, dealing with the things that God wants you to deal with, you'll be in the future still dealing with your past. Oh my God. Because the past that you don't acknowledge will be your present and be in your future as well. So some things you... That's in your past. You want to stay in your past. <laughs> but it can only stay in the past if you learn the lesson now. And so when you look back, okay, this happened. It was what it was. It is what it is. But I learned the lesson. Now I'm a different person now. I'm a different woman now. I'm a different man now. 
So, so don't be ashamed of your past if you learn the lessons from your past. So now you can be in your present and get the downloads that God wants you to have now so you can be increased in your future. Glory to God. So my time is up and I, I want to uh, pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for everyone that's tuning in, everyone that will watch this replay. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to help us to pass our remedial courses. We, we can't go back and redeem the time, but you can do that. But so, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, as we pass these remedial courses and move on and increase and become wiser and increase, be able to be willing to hear and increase our learning, be willing to be teachable, be willing to learn what we don't know, be willing, Father God, to call on you, knowing that you will answer us and you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of. And so, Father God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to help your people now, encourage your people now, elevate your people. Father God, you have increasing us on your mind. You want to increase us. You want to increase our children. You want to increase our grandchildren. And so, Father God, I'm asking you now to move by your spirit. Redeem the time. Restore the years. We can't do it. Restore the years that the canker worm, the locust, and the palmer worm have eaten up in our lives, Father God. And, 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 and do something supernatural, God. Do in six months what would have taken 16 years. In the name of Jesus, Father God, expedite the process in the name of Jesus, according to your will, according to your supernatural power. And we praise you and credit for doing it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And bless God. Go, and go ahead and give him a praise. Just give him praise for redeeming the time, doing what you can't do. Now, you can't go back and, and undo what you've done. The time that's spent can't be unspent. But I thank God that he's the one who can redeem. He's the one who can restore. Glory to God. And so I give God praise for that tonight. And I thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray that you've got something out of this. And before we close, I want to give you an opportunity, as always, you've been blessed by this teaching tonight. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, soak. We do have a cash app that's on the screen right now. It's the dollar sign Kingdom Worship CTR and the number eight. Once again, that's dollar sign Kingdom Worship. CTR and the number eight. Also, if you prefer uh, PayPal, we do have PayPal as well. And that is paypal.me forward slash KWCI and the number eight. Once again, that's paypal.me forward slash KWCI and the number eight. Also, if you want to, uh, Send me a text. Say, Pastor, this uh, broadcast is blessed me. You want to send me a text, a prayer request. Phone number is on the screen, 404-566-1711. Once again, 404-566-1711. Send me a text. You need me to agree with you in prayer. Send me a text. I'll pray with you. Also, we do have uh, an email. Send us an email at Kingdom Worship Center, I-N-T-L, at gmail.com. Once again, that's Kingdom Worship Center, I-N-T-L, at gmail.com. You name it, a touch and agree with you, I'll be glad to pray with you. And so I uh, thank you once again for tuning in. Also, I want to reiterate, I'm an author. I have four books on Amazon.com right now. Wounded Get Packing with Potential, first edition and revised edition. I also have a book entitled Established Lies. I have a marriage devotional entitled What God Has Joined Together, Marriage Devotional. All of these books are full of revelation and insight, and they will bless you. If you already got it, uh, go ahead purchase one for a friend and sow it into their lives. But I thank you in advance for your patronage and for your support and spread the word and do me a final favor. Invite somebody to tune in next Wednesday night at 730 for another broadcast of Kingdom Worship Center International 
empowerment Bible study. I pray you've been empowered and enlightened and have received revelation. And I'll see you next Wednesday night at 730. Be blessed. I appreciate you. I love you. Searching for a brighter day. Where do they go? Tell me, what do they say?